Many thanks for joining us here on News Today. My name is Kwabna Chencha in the board into our very first story. And the National Security Council is calling for public vigilance as it announces the country faces a credible terrorist threat. A meeting of the council yesterday under the chairmanship of President John Dramani Mahama advised the general public to be cautious, curious, and report any unusual circumstances to the law enforcement agencies. We've been speaking to Dr. Imano Kwesienin, who has been sharing some thoughts on the issue. The initial thought was, well, this is very useful, but it's too little, too late. And the statement recognizes that there's a credibility to the threat and that security is a collaborative venture. But then how do we do that? How do we build collaborative partnerships? What does the market woman or the market woman need to look out for? when she goes to the market today, or a shopkeeper, how much ordinary people in communities who are living in what we call compound houses look out for? When we take Totro, what should we be looking out for? And were we to know what we are supposed to look out for? And there was something that raised our heckles. Where is the hotline number that we need to call? So I think it's important that now government itself recognizes the credibility of this threat, although we've been raising our voices for the last two years and have been accused differently of looking for jobs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but one is to recognize that the threat is now real. The second is to say what is the nature of the threat and how is it changing and how will it manifest itself. And if we say that it is a collaborative partnership, then how should you and I respond to that collaboration? Okay. And I think it should be a collaborative partnership. That is their logic, that is trusting, that is predicated on respect, um, and a desire to keep communities and this country safe. Okay, in the statement, um, the communication suggested that security will be heightened in setting public locations and that mm -hmm. Ghanaians should not be worried about it. Yeah. Is that enough, or should we be getting more information from them? Well, I think we should be getting a bit more information. You see, because when you heighten the security, naturally people will get worried, and it will, and it will, people will be frightened and worried. It will have an impact on on uh, 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 businesses, you know. Hey, I buy a casa, you want to say the I won't go here, you know. So we've got to say, look, how do we handle these things in a manner that there is trust, there is understanding, there is collaboration, and there is partnership. You see, and when we heighten the security at public buildings and in private spaces. What are the people who are there looking for? You see, because there are quite a number of people who have these toy cameras that they, mirror that they use to check under the vehicle. And you ask them, so what are you looking for? I'm looking for a bomb, or I'm looking for a, a grenade. Okay, so I think it's good that there's a certain heightened awareness, uh, but there's more need for public information that says this is what we can all do to improve things. To some politics now, and 2012 flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party, Dr. Papa Kweseindom, has expressed his readiness to help President John Dramani Mahama fix the many challenges facing the country. Mr. Indom, speaking to me a while ago over Skype from the United States, said he's willing to avail his services to the president if it will inure to the benefits of Ghanaians. His condition, however, is that he provides his assistance in his capacity as a Ghanaian and businessman and not an appointee by the president. I have never been contacted by this president. Uh, when former president Kufo asked me to do some things for him, I did. Um, I, I don't want to mention names, but others had contacted me for some suggestions and I have provided them, some of them in writing. I have not, never been contacted by this president for anything. And it's not that I need to be contacted, mm. but I am 
I am a player in this system. Are you, are you availing your services to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama? Should he decide to call you up and uh, offer you a role in his government? Will you be willing to take that up in oh, the interest I, I, of Mother as, Ghana? As, as for if you're talking being minister and that sort of thing, I've done that, okay, and I've moved on. But should, should he need advice on energy? Should he need advice um, on creating employment? Should he need advice? On education, I'll be more than happy to provide it. In what capacity? Uh, in my private capacity, um, mm -hmm. just as I'm talking to you. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, I'm doing a whole bunch of other things throughout the country, right. and I've gained some valuable experience. Uh, that experience, yes, I use for my private profit, but as a citizen of Ghana, mm -hmm. uh, I'd be happy to share my experiences with him, just as I would be happy to share my experiences with any president. Uh, that comes in, in this republic. Well, Dr. Indom has also been speaking on his decision to debate the president on topical issues of national interest. Debate. I will be able to explain in detail to the Ghanaian public why the problem is much bigger than he's making it out to be, why the rush to claim credit for solving a problem uh, is just playing to the gallery and, and it's politically motivated, and why we need to take time uh, and implement this, uh, what the solutions that we all know um, properly so that Ghanaian business people, Ghanaian people from all walks of life uh, can live a better life. So I'm saying that that's one of the problems, one of the issues that I have challenged him uh, to debate. So, so, doc, so, uh, so, so, sorry, Doc, but I just yes. want to find out something. Uh, is debate, is debating him the only medium? Is getting a platform where you can engage the president the only medium? Some would suggest that, well, you can uh, address the media, you can uh, go with press releases. Quite a number of options uh, that you could look at. Why necessarily a debate? Well, we have been um, uh, putting out press releases. I have been talking to the media but just take a look at the attention uh, mm -hmm. this debate matter has raised, okay? Mm -hmm. It is gaining national attention. And so through a debate, a national debate, uh, policy matters that are really critical and important uh, to be addressed, which uh, sometimes are just brushed aside, uh, they will come to the fore and we will all be the better for it. And I think that the policy options of government uh, would also be enriched. So it is important that we debate these matters, and it is important that the President of the Republic makes himself available, available uh, to go through this. Not some minister, not some spokesperson, not some communicator, but the President himself. He is the one who is elected mm. To, mm. to lead this nation. But Kendo, uh, many, are, uh, many are those who believe that you just want to use this opportunity to expose the President and Probably is, uh, for want of a better word, lack of clear policy. I mean, is that a case? Is that the intent? No, you know, I, I'm, I'm Ghanaian like you are. Uh, I want the best for my country. Uh, and the best for my country can only come out after we explore the options that are, that are there, after we subject to critique uh, what the administration is doing. If things go wrong, it affects all of us. If they go right, we all benefit. I want things to go right. And, and uh, an administration can't sit in isolation and say, we've got the best brains, we've got the best talent, and so we're going to do whatever it is that we plan to do. They need to engage all of us. That is why some of us are prepared to talk, that yes, we're not in power, we're, we're not, um, some people might not even be running for uh, any, any, any position or anything, but we are Ghanaians. We are business people, we are investors, we are citizens, and our voices are important. Our ideas mm. uh, must be put on the table for the benefit. Uh, so it's not a matter of trying to embarrass anybody. It is not a matter of, of exposing uh, anyone. And it is definitely not a matter of trying to bring anyone to ridicule. It's a point of, let me put my ideas on the table, let me provide suggestions, let me put solutions there. Mm. Let's debate them. Okay. And let's find okay. out what's the best that right. will, will benefit all Ghanaians. So, now, during these investigations have revealed that the shortage of water that has hit the Indian 
eastern region and part of the greater Accra region is as a result of the blockage of a tributary by San Wenaza Chichere in the eastern region. The Kuya River is a tributary that joins the Densu River. Now, because of the blockade, water is unable to flow to the Densu River, making it impossible for the Ghana Water Company to get enough water for production. Latif Idris is just returning from Chichere and joins me now in studio with a lot more on what he found there. So, Latif, many thanks for joining us. So, uh, first and foremost, tell us about the situation there. You're saying that uh, a portion of the the river has been blocked and exactly. as a result of that, we are not getting access to water? Uh, exactly, Tantene. And we must make the point that still the watershed touch is still ongoing in, in Sawam and its adjoining communities. Now, this is the situation. We have sun winners who operate beyond this tributary called mm -hmm. Kuya. It's a Kuya River, it's like we, you mentioned in the intro, a tributary that joins the main Densu River. They operate beyond the Kuya River. So they were unable to cross the Kuya River to go to their business center, if you like. So in order for them to get there, they heaped lots of sand uh, at that portion, that section of the Kuya River, which they use as their road to their mm. I mean, uh, winning center. As a result, uh, water is not flowing through to the main Densu River for the water company to, I mean, treat and then distribute for consumers in the in uh, Sawam and other Have communities. you been uh, speaking to these people? Um, did you by any chance come across any of these sound winners and manage to speak to them? Because I'm wondering yeah. how anyone can put his selfish interest above exactly. the interest of the entire community. And the interesting thing is that they, they, they are armed, actually. They are armed? Yeah. They have weapons on them. So we were advised not to even make the attempt to go there. One, that's one reason why we couldn't go there. The second reason has to do with the fact that the whole place is flooded. You can't, you would have to swim actually to get to the other side of the river. Mm. Because now, you know, yesterday my source told me that uh, some officers from the water company visited this area with a police escort. They didn't go there alone to plead for these sun winners to create a bit of a pathway for the water to pass in order for the water company to get access to the water they need to, to treat. I find that interesting because they are breaching the law. This is so, a total... So, so, so based on what you are saying, mm -hmm. the Ghana Water Company is aware of this illegality that is being perpetrated? Not, not the Ghana Water Company, as, but we have some residents who live close to the company, the okay. water company, yeah. They are aware. I don't know if they've tabled this to the Ghana Water Company and we don't know exactly what the I mean, what a company is doing about it, if indeed they are aware of the situation. But as far as I'm concerned, we cannot speak on authority and say that the water company is aware. Okay. But that is what we have found out, that the blockade is also partly to blame for the shortage oh, that the shortage that's situation the there. greater Accra region and parts of the eastern region are experiencing. Right. But yeah. many thanks for that update, uh, Latif Idris. And that was my colleague, Latif Idris, who just returned from Chichere, by the way, uh, in that uh, undercover piece we have been uh, following up. Let, let's try and get uh, some... Let's let's try and let's try and get some thoughts on this from the director of communications for the Ghana Water Company Limited, Stanley Mate. Stanley Mate, who is standing by on phone now with a lot more. So, Mr. Mate, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and many thanks for joining us here on News Today. Uh, please, I'm not Stanley Mate. My, my name is uh, Asante Martin, and Sta Asante. I'm the production manager of uh, Ghana Water Company. Okay. Martin answer Santi. Okay, right. Martin, many thanks for that uh, clarification there. So, uh, I, I believe this this particular situation has come to your attention. Yes, please. It has. It has. Okay. And uh, what is your outfit doing about it as we speak? We we, we sought the assistance of uh, what we got the news. We sought the assistance of the NCE and the police. The, 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 I think the state police. So uh, they gave us men, and our district manager accompanied them to the place. And they will force the guys to open the, the blockade. So as we speak now, the, we have enough water in our, in our, in our reservoir now to pump. Uh, I have said this morning, we have enough water to pump. What okay. we are waiting for as, as, as of our citizens was power. Because it happened that the ECG2 was uh, on the ticket and exercise. And the problem is that in an hour's time, I believe this, I haven't called back anyway. I believe this time maybe they give us the power in time. And uh, we have started pumping. So that's the situation now. So uh, I just want to find out something. You're saying that based on that tip off you got from our reporter, uh, now the situation has been rectified and, and because of that there's water flowing through residents of the eastern region and parts of the greater Accra region may now be getting a lot more water. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's exactly. Well, now we have 
the, the guys block they block the flow. Mm. Uh, what was one of the reasons why we were not getting enough in our reserve water? As soon as the block blockage was removed, we now have, and I can testify myself, but I, mean, there, I was there this morning at the period of the The intake area is very, very full. As I said, it's very, very full. And I say what we are waiting now is to get power from this city to start our, our, our normal. So, 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 one question I would want to find, I would want to get an answer to on this show right now is uh, why. Your outfits will wait for such a long period of time, uh, allow the many residents in the eastern region and the greater Accra region to uh, endure such hardships and uh, uh, waiting for we, the journalists, to discover such a thing before you act. First of all, it's not the journalists who, who, who told us. It was a victim because as a result of the blockade, water, the, the water flooded, flooded a lot of farms around the place. One of the farmers, it was one of the farmers who came to intent. And you must also remember that uh, we never knew of the blockade. We never knew that somebody was had blocked the bridge uh, to allow him to win sand. But as soon as we got there, we went there, and 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 uh, the, the the thing was open. You know, now the security the security agencies are taking care of whoever did that. Then, as for us, our joy is our joy is that we have enough water now to pump to start treatment. That is that is our joy. It's not as if we sat down and allow and allow the people to. So nobody knew that somebody had blocked the river course. And I, I think that, that as soon as we had the hint, we moved, mm. we moved it. So now you're saying you have enough water. Uh, we have, oh, but yes. you are waiting on the electricity company of Ghana to provide you with electricity so that yeah, you I can pump see. this I, water I, I, I to the many homes. Morning. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But ECG was carrying out an exercise. I think they are changing some of the lines. But my, uh, I've been called by this officer that they have been assured that by midday, I mean, it could be, it could be this time. I've not called back anymore. So you're saying by close of day, residents in the yes, eastern yes, region yes, and parts yes, of the greater yes, Accra region should have taps flowing. We will start, pump, we will start pumping by, by close of day. We will start pumping. You start pumping by close of day. When are they likely to get water in their homes? Oh, when we start pumping, we'll be sending the water to the reservoir. So say from tomorrow morning, I think that people will start accepting water. Is right. Mr. Hassan Asante, many thanks for your time. We'll be following up on this issue keenly and uh, we'll be bringing viewers a lot more on this. That's Martin Ansan Asante, production manager for the Ghana Water Company Limited in the Eastern Region, saying that or it looks like uh, for those of you who live in the Eastern Region, you haven't had access to water in a while. And for those of you also here in some parts of the Greater Accra Region who also have not had access to water in a while, the situation is likely to improve by tomorrow. We'll be following this keenly and we're bringing viewers a lot more. You're watching news today here on your Joy News channel on more. TV. We are taking a break. We'll return shortly with some more stories. Don't go away. Many thanks for staying on news today here on the Joy News Channel on Multi TV. To some more stories now, and uh, the Public Procurement Authority says it has stepped up efforts to ensure public institutions do not take advantage of the Procurement Act by abusing the sole source and option. Speaking a while ago on News Desk, Public Relations Officer for the Authority, Rhoda Pia, said her outfit has begun the process of exposing institutions that tend to abuse their system as a means of ensuring proper accountability to their citizenry. Just the fact that it can be prone to corruption. I must say that merely by the fact that it is um, of a non competitive nature, the authority has taken steps to also issue particular or clear guidelines on how you can apply the method in any procurement process. The main or the headers in these guidelines are three. First of all, in requesting for the use of this method, an institution would have to prove beyond reasonable doubt or have a justification under the um, section 40, which warrants their use. Let me quickly highlight some of the um, conditions that um, the law has given room to for the use of those. First of all, the law says that you can use single source procurement when the item you are going to procure has exclusive rights. Now, the element of exclusivity comes in when it when it comes to issues regarding copyright and the rest of it. So, for instance, if a school would want to procure textbooks which have been um, approved by the Ministry of Education, you, they will just have to get those doors to be able to deal with that particular publisher because that's already been approved. Again, in, in um, situations of urgent 
um, nature or uh, requirement. The law gives room for you to use single source. But once again, you have to prove that there's not been any delay that has been caused on your own side. So once again, in the educational sector, you cannot come to social, come for social approval for the maybe the procurement of desks for school children in September. I mean, you can't rush that in in August because you knew at the beginning of the year that school will, will reopen in September. So we expect, first of all, effective procurement planning to be done so that those unnecessary um, urgent procurement requests don't even come in. I must say that the authority from time to time has come to deny institutions that are requested for single source with this kind of um, um, request. The Speaker of Parliament, Edward Duajao, is acting as President of Ghana following the absence of uh, the President and his Vice. President Mahama is travelling to Scotland today and is expected back in Ghana on Saturday while the Vice President is currently in India. It is however unclear if the Speaker will avail himself to the Presidential Oath. We know he has refused to take on two previous occasions. Now joining us on the line now with a lot more on this is parliamentary correspondent Elton Brobe, uh, who has a lot more detail on this. So, uh, Elton, has the speaker taken the presidential oath now? Yes, of course. Now he's vowed to the Supreme Court ruling and he's taking the presidential oath. So, as of now, we can say that he is the acting uh, president of the Republic yeah. uh, in the absence of President John Mahama and Vice President Bakwesi and Mr. Asa. Uh, he's vacated the seat and uh, the first of his speaker is now presiding. Uh, over business of the house, uh, um, and uh, and this is the, the reason why this has become an interesting issue. Is is the fact that uh, in 2014, Edward uh, Edward refused to take the presidential or when President Mahama and Vice President Pakwesi Amitabisa were not in the country. Now the Supreme Court, I'm sure you are aware, in a unanimous decision declared in December 2015 that the Speaker of Parliament violated Article 61, Clause 12, 11 and 12 of the Constitution when he declined to be sworn in as acting president when uh, the, first, the president and the vice were out of the country. And the, the nine-member panel uh, affirmed that the speaker shall always before assuming the functions of the office of the president when the president and the vice are unable to perform their functions, seek and subscribe to the oath set out in relation to the office of the president. So today... <coughs> Today, when the speaker announced uh, a communication from the president indicating that uh, the president had left the country and the vice president was not in town, the chief justice was invited into the chamber uh, to take the speaker through the presidential oath. So, mm -hmm. for now, the speaker is in the acting position whilst we await the arrival of the, of the vice president, whom we are told will be in Ghana uh, in the evening. Right, Elton. But aside that, what else has been happening in parliament today? Well, they are considering the amendment to the telecommunication uh, bill. This bill is looking at, you know, strengthening the arms of the NCA in taking a critical look at the interconnectivity uh, clearinghouse mm -hmm. and other issue relating to the telecommunication sector. Mm -hmm. The committee just presented the report. It's been taken to a second reading. Indeed, government wants to address the issue of steam bus fraud and also address the issue of where telecommunication uh, companies can help each other in areas where they are unable to reach. For example, if I'm, I am on a different network, I travel outside of Accra, I'm not getting service on that network, but there's another telecommunication provider who has access in that area. I can connect to that telecommunication company uh, when I'm a be on their network. These are some of the issues that they are considering mm -hmm. in the new bill. Right. Elton, many thanks for that update. And that was Parliamentary Correspondent Elton Brobe bringing us a lot more from Parliament where we are told that now Speaker of Parliament Edward Dua Jaho is acting in the capacity of President following the absence of both the President and Vice President. You're taking a break here on News Today. When we come back, we'll bring your business with John and Marco.
and now time to do some now time to do some business and banks are stepping up effort to rope more of them banked into the banking sector through innovative strategies this has perhaps become even more crucial following the decline in customer savings largely blamed on difficult economic times capital bank has in this light launched the v-man campaign which seeks to give customers money vouchers to open accounts. The bank's head of retail banking, Eunice Brook, explained the initiative to join business at the launch. The VMEN campaign is a campaign that is specially designed for our clients, that is prospective clients. What we are saying is that we will be giving free cash to clients um, through the VMAN campaign. Our direct sales executives will be on the road from tomorrow and they will have cash vouchers. And they will give these cash vouchers to prospective clients as they move along um, selected locations. The emphasis is more on savings. We're encouraging people to build a savings culture. We know that there's about 70% of the population that is unbanked, and we want to ensure that we get everybody putting their money in the bank, saving their money, and not leaving it under their pillow. And the notion that commercial banks do not lend to small and medium-sized enterprises may not be all true after all. At least judging from the latest move by JCB Bank, the bank has launched a product which could enable such small business access to 100,000 Ghana cities on in loans. Acting manager of the JCB Bank, Samuel Sapon, explained to Joy Business why his outfit decided to introduce a loan product, despite the perceived risk involved. Funds have always been available to SMEs. The only challenge is to find a way of identifying the risk profile of, of the customers who you are providing money to. And GCB has actually developed a unique capability to be able to manage the, the risk or identify the risk uh, of potential borrowers. So that's what has enabled us to be able to offer this product as we, as we are launching today. Once you bank with the bank, we know your performance. We have the, the account performance through our systems. And as a result, based upon that, we are able to make decisions in terms of how much money you need and whether you are, your business is viable to be able to uh, uh, support any repayments that are required as part of, of offering you a, a facility. And that's what we have been able to develop a proprietary system to be able to do that. The actor and managing director of GCB Bank, Samuel Sapon, and then business here. But for more, you can join me on the marketplace exactly 1 to 1.30. My name is John Kojo Amwako. Good afternoon, my name is Baba Tando. Join me, let's talk sports, and we begin with the Black Stars. Now, Adam Larson Kwasi has made a return to the team and may feature when Ghana takes on Mozambique over two legs for the 2017 Nations Cup qualifiers. Now, the Portland Timbers' uh, safest pair of hands joins 22 others named by Ghana coach Avram Grant for the March 24 and 27 assignments. Joining me in studio is Redwan Ibrahim Asante to assess the 23-man squad. But first of all, here are the squad members. Uh, for goalkeepers, we have Razak. For goalkeepers, uh, like I told you, we have uh, Razak uh, Brahma, we have um, Adam Kwasi and Richard Ofori. Richard Ofori is locally based. He plays for WA All Stars. Uh, Adam Kwasi plays for Portland Timbers of USA. Um, and then uh, Razak Brahma plays for Cordoba in Spain. Harrison Afo, Daniel Amate, Jeffrey Schlop, Baba Rahman, John Boy, uh, Jonathan Mensah, and Jima Day make up the defenders. So we're seeing soon who the midfielders are. And we have Rabiu Mohammed, Emmanuel Ajeman Bedru, Efiye Akwa, Samuel Tete, Mubarak Wakasu, Franca Champon, Alfred Duncan, Christian Achu, they make up the midfielders who will be taking on Mozambique. And then for the forwards or the strikers, we have Asamoa Jack. Jordan Ayu, uh, Abdul Majid Boris, Ebenezer Asifwa, and David Akam. So, Redwan Ibrahim Asanti of Joy Sports, uh, he joins me in studio. Redwan, you have seen the squad. Any surprises? Um, not at all. I think um, we never had, you know, all those you know players we're expecting to be mm. the team. I, I think we we're waiting for, you know, a huge number of local based players to be in the team. But Abram decided to give all these slots to two players, the goalkeeper. 
Richard Ofori, for me, he deserves it because he's considered just one goal in four matches. He's been key for Wow Stars, and you can see his, his, his career is always on the rise. Ever since he broke into the under-20 team, he was first choice goalkeeper for the under-23 at the All Africa Games in um, Brazzaville, Congo, and then um, also in the league. So, I mean, he, that, that fits him with respect to the goalkeepers. And then Samuel Tete, you know, playing also as part of um, the midfielders of the team, mm. he's currently the leading scorer um, in the squad with um, four goals in four matches, mm. and he's the first player to have scored a hat trick in the league. And um, so he deserves to be there. And if you check the rest of um, the your base players, and especially, oh, almost all of them, you know, uh, are doing well. Razak Brahma, you know, as part of the goalkeepers, doing very, very well. Mm. say virtually was one of the best goalkeepers in the MLS last mm. season okay. when Portland Timbers won the MLS title. And the midfielders also, Rabiu, with um, uh, FC um, Kuban Krasnoda mm. in Russia, doing very, very well. Ajman Bidu has scored a lot of goals there. Now, for the strikers, Warriors is in top form. Just last week, Sunday, Benizé Sifua, who plays for FC Sion in Switzerland, scored a goal, although they, they were beaten 3-2 by Young Boys. So he's, he's been able to uh, bring together, I think, the best performance in Europe. You, okay. you can't fault him that much, you know, for the squad. Okay, he's, he's let, me, let, let me be a bit of a pessimist. Is there anybody in the squad that you think should not be there? Yes, there's talk of um, Nanakwis Yasari, mm -hmm. you know, not being part of um, the squad. I think Samuel Inkuma has also played well you know, the last few months, especially when he moved from Boavista to the Turkish league, he's done very, very well for his side. He's, he's put in a lot of work as well. But then who should Avram drop? Hmm. We're talking about 23 players. Who should Avram drop? Daniel Amati, we know of his, his pedigree, just that he's lacked, you know, game time at Leicester. Jeffrey Schlopp is coming in well-conditioned after returning from injury. And, you know, Barbara Mann also has had you know, quite a number of games under mm -hmm. his belt at mm -hmm. Chelsea, even though Chelsea's season has been very, very wretched. And he himself, is, uh, he's a bit, his, his, his appearance uh, for Chelsea has been a bit in a topsy-turvy Yeah, time. yeah, for me. And, but he's had, you know, quite a number of, um, sizable number of games mm. for him to, you know, play in the national team. So we, I think it's the best we can get. Just that Are Andre, you sure it's the best we can get? No, that's, that's the best we can get. Mm. The, the, so the players are... can we present this, uh, you know, this squad or 90% of this squad in an African Cup of Nations match? Listen, listen. If Andre should come, then who should sit on the bench? Maybe <laughs> Alfred Duncan. Mm. You know, because Duncan has had opportunities and still not, proving you know, himself. proving himself. But the last two months, he's been key. And he's playing in the Italian Serie A. You should watch the goal he scored against AC Milan. It was such a cracker. And his week in, week out, he's playing 90 minutes, you know, for his club in the Italian Serie A. We're not talking about any other league, but the Italian Serie A. And you can see his, 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 his also his career always on the rise. After leaving Inter, he went to loan at Empoli, played for Livorno, and then, you know, came back to the Serie A, mm. played in Sampdoria last season. Now he's with Sassuolo, and you can see he's constantly on the rise. So, I mean, if Andre should return fully fit, who, who is Avram going to drop? I, I think we have to also, at point in time, empathize with the man who is calling the shot and say, yes, we know you have selection headache and you can't bring in all the players we want to you know, assemble. Remember, only 23 players exactly. he's supposed to present. Okay, but I think that Avram still has a lot of work to do in terms of scouting. No, no, he's, and he knows it. That's why he's watched mm -hmm. you know, three league games now. And, you know, he visited... Nanaku mm -hmm. You know, uh, on authority, Nanaku Siasai told him he's not prepared to play. He visited Kujua Samoa. Kujua Samoa, I, I, I think, did not want to rush his return to the Blast Stars. So, I mean, you can't fault him. He's mm -hmm. doing his best. You might have issues with the number of days he spends, you know, in the country. But then, Abram is... I, I don't know which other player we would have selected, apart from the 23 we have. Okay, so you think we can do um, a good job over Mozambique? Yeah, Mozambique are the table propers in, the ta uh, on, on, in, in Group H. And they've, they've not Ghana picked up a point at all. And, and uh -huh. we are on top with six points, exactly. followed by Rwanda and then Mauritius. Mozambique...
have no points out of two games. Okay, all right. So it will be easy for us then. But um, Ridwan, just before you go, um, the MTN FA Cup round of uh, 64 uh, draw has been held and uh, the fixtures are already out. We'll see them on our screens pretty shortly. Um, I mean, let's just talk about some selected matches, uh, especially hard to going to play against Wasaman FC, uh, which used yeah, to be in yeah, the but Premier but League. The big, the big game is Tichima City, City and the Diana Stars. Stars. That's, exactly. That's the headline for um, the week. And also we've got, you know, some Sunyani Liberty um, playing against, I think, Tamale Liberty. Um, that's a, a bit of a, a clash there mm -hmm. where two Liberty sides will, will be <laughs> meeting. And then um, Mediema also have got a, a, a fair draw. That likewise, as Antikotoko, I'm interested in you know how a team like Oshion FC or FC um, Shion will play against Shion. AK Shion. You know, they're very against. interesting names in the lower divisions. In, in the lower divisions. <laughs> and these are signs coming from the Division 2, you know, there for you. And Unity FC and then Real um, 24 hours. No, these are these interesting are very names. <laughs> and Sun City, uh, Ashgold taking on Sun City, exactly. Uh, we have Rainbow FC up against Tamale, uh, Real Tamale United, RTU. I can't wait to see them in action. AC Milan FC in Ghana, they are taking on New Edubiase. While Rockets, they take on Real Boku United. Okoye United are up against Dreams FC. Uh, Okoye United, Dreams FC. I'm looking forward to that particular that's, that's, match That's too. also be another be uh, tantalizing you know, fixture. Mm. You know, in there, there's Crystal Palace in Ghana, mm -hmm. and they play in Talais. <laughs> and that's in, um, also interesting. And then Ebuswan Do of Eleven Wise also is a mouth. I think it's, it's going to be a mini derby, won't yeah. it be? And yeah. then we've got Mediama versus Liberty. That game we played in Takwa. Mm. That's also all Premier League affair. So we've got few games there with respect to Premier League, you know, all Premier League ties. Yeah. And that will be interesting. My Wapa, you know, will have to travel to Ifutu Great Kennedy. All right, uh, Redwan, thanks very much for your time. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the matches in the round of 64 of the MTN FA Cup 2015-2016. So uh, the Black Stars squad of 23 is out. Uh, join us uh, in our subsequent bulletins of sports as we bring you details of that particular one and more. But check out more sports headlines on the sports page of myjoyonline.com. My name is Baba Tando. My job is done. Good afternoon. That's how we wrap up on news today here on your Joe News channel on Multi TV. Remember, there's a lot more news when you visit www.myjoeonline.com. My name is Kwabna Chenchaini Boat. Many thanks for your company. But do remember that coming up next is the marketplace with John and Mark. Many thanks for your company once more.